Blog Talk Radio. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Impact Voice. I'm your host, Furman Jackson. We're doing good on this lovely Saturday evening, of course, and we have a same uh, episode this evening. Um, I have my cousin on the line. They're known as Divine Purpose. They have an upcoming event um, scheduled for October 26th here in the downtown Mobile area. So, Divine Purpose, welcome to Impact Voice Radio Broadcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on? Divine Purpose in the house. Can you hear me pretty good? We can loud and clear, man. Welcome to uh, Unimpact Voice. Thank y'all for taking time out of your busy schedule um, to be able to be on the broadcast this evening. Um, I know y'all got a lot of science things coming up. We're going to get right into the interview. So, I want to ask you who is Divine Purpose? Let the audience know who is Divine Purpose. What's going on, everybody out there? Divine Purpose is the husband and wife music group. We also do a event called the Push for Peace. We have a nonprofit organization, but we just we we just regular people trying to make a difference. Awesome. Trying That's to represent God, man. Hey, Amen. And my next question is: I know it's a husband and wife team. How did you and your wife meet? Well, I'm gonna let my wife tell this story. This is one of her favorite stories, so I'm gonna let her tell it. <laughs> Um, I was actually in the car with my guard two fields about one o'clock in the morning and some guys was in the car one and another car following us and we didn't want them to follow us to where we were going because we were on our way home. So we cut through um Old Charlie's Old Charlie's and he was in the parking lot and he called my name. And um, I knew him from high school, so I was like, hey, you know, he just came over to the car and started talking about how he had two jobs and his own <laughs> and his own car and um, all this blah, blah, blah. The rest, blah, is, blah, the blah. rest <laughs> is history. Yeah, and well, he told the guys to go on. tell the story. Oh, okay, you're okay. going to okay. take over. Long story short, I was, I was <laughs> cooking at uh, Old Charlie's. And uh, her and the guys was having to be rolling through the parking lot, and I just spotted her with my eagle eye. And then I put the game on the man, and she did <laughs> all the rest is history. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's so cute and everything. But I'm going to ask this to the man again. Right <laughs> 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 oh, man. 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 Oh, uh, the Bible says when a man finds a wife, finds a good thing, and also obtains favor. <laughs> so explain to the men who may be out there listening, looking for that significant other. But explain how you knew that Danielle was your wife. 
Well, I mean, it was it was more than one thing, you know. Um, she she was a help to me immediately, you know. Um, she she would always help me out. Uh, she would bring me things to eat. Uh, even when I was you know mean to her, you know, she would still you know kind of be there for me, you know. And uh, she just took care of me man, from the jump, you know, and just oh, always goodness. made me feel made me feel <laughs> welcome, you know, in her presence. And uh, she was just a good person, man. She she knew God. Uh, you know, we used to go to church together before we got married. You know, when we was basically just talking, and uh, that was that was a big thing. You know, I wanted a woman who who knew God. So um, us going to church together, meeting her church family and and friends and and things like that. She had a career, you know, and she was doing things like that. So it was just a group of things, man. That you know led over a period of time that. You know, God showed me she was the one, you know. And I always say this, man, if a woman is willing to bring you something to eat, no matter where you are and no matter what time of day is, that's a good woman you should consider keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that that's word that's words of wisdom, word to the wise. So gentlemen, you hear that. If she takes time out of the to bring you something to eat, then that's the keeper right there. Um my next question oh, is, Lord. I don't know about that. I don't know about his story. You just, just be quiet. <laughs> uh, Lee, you out there cutting the grass, you bring you a cup of water. Hey, that's it right there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I ain't saying it. Exactly. <laughs> you didn't have to tell her to do it. She's going to bring it. She didn't even have to tell her to do it. She's going to bring it. All right. That's right. <laughs> we got to ask. Well, your story is a little, his story is a little different from mine. <laughs> 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 All right, the next question. Right. What is Push for Peace? What is Push for Peace about? Push for Peace? It's oh, a community yeah. event. It's a party. It's outreach. <laughs> it's, it's organizations coming together. It's, it's the community coming together. It's, it's, it's the hope for peace. It's, it's encouragement to, to people who might, you know, think there's no hope. I hear it. it's showing love to people who might not understand that it's still people who love one another the way that the Bible say we should. You know, it's performances, it's rappers, singers, dancers, it's it's judges, it's mayors, police chiefs, local citizens, children. I would say the um, push for peace is a mission to uh, promote peace in our community through faith. Unity and love is we culminated in an event, but it's really more than an event. It's an initiative um, to push, to spark, to inspire something in people to go out and do what they can do. Because a lot of people, you know, because of the times and things that are going on, a lot of people are fearful. A lot of people feel like, oh, these are just the signs of the end times. And to be honest, a lot of people. It, especially in the church, are just um, satisfied and content with just sitting idly by watching, you know, as it happens. And they present um, a sense of hopelessness. And for us, that's not what God is saying, you know, in the Word. Even though you can recognize the times when you see the signs, nowhere does it say just sit idly by. You know, we have work to do, and we can't stop doing the work, so we have to push you know, push for that peace because still, you know, the kingdom is not coming until everybody has the opportunity to know God and have the opportunity to receive salvation. So there's always more work to do. So um, push for peace, is that's what it is. It's an initiative. Awesome. And what date and time will the will, uh, push for peace take place here in the city of Mobile? Uh, it'll take place on Friday, October 26, 2018, starting at 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in downtown Cathedral Square. Um, that's on the corner of Dolphin and Jackson Street. I'm sorry. It's on Contai. Contai and Jackson, Dolphin. Yeah, right across okay. from the police department. <laughs> and bring your lawn chairs, too. Anybody who's listening out here, bring your lawn chairs. We're going to have the stage set up. We're going to have the lights. We're going to have the cameras, photographers. We're going to have the newest crew out there. It's going to be a real live event. So 
bring your bring your lawn chairs and enjoy the show and come and be a part of a great event. Awesome. And I awesome. And I say y'all doing some great work here in the city of Mobile. Um y'all still pressing. Like Paul's I press my way. Y'all continue on pressing for the high call and the high mark in Christ and just keep doing what y'all doing. Um, my next question is, what is next for divine purpose? Next for Divine Purpose is... Uh, we have a, a new single coming out. New music. New music, new apparel, um, new branding. It's not really new, it's just more... Modified. Um, it's modified. Intensified. Uh, intensified. We're going to be... Uh, we just want to get out more. All of it basically is centered around our first love, which is God, which is the kingdom. So... Uh, we just want to glorify him. Uh, we do our first single. Uh, the title of it is Child of the King. Child of the King. And the album that after all of our singles come out is going to be um, Nothing Ordinary because that's what we're bringing, Nothing Ordinary, not, you know, completely unexpected, not what you expect. So um, just look forward to that. It's going to be, it's gonna be hot. totally different from what... You know, you would expect, but also still the message will be clear. Oh yeah. You know. And, and we have a song on that album coming out called Simple and Plain, and uh, that's what we like to keep it simple and plain. You know, there's no need to camouflage what we're rapping about, what we're singing about. You're gonna know exactly what we're talking about. You know, so uh, Simple and Plain is a, is a single on the new uh, new project, but but now it's gonna be Child of the King. So be looking out for that, man. It's gonna be how we gotta send that song to you. Also, I do appreciate it. Um, my next question is, what advice do y'all have for married couples who are working in ministry together? We know that ministry um, play a big role. We know that you also have have time for family as well. Cause we know the scripture says that if a man don't, don't rule his own house so well, you know, it's impossible for him to take care of um, God's house. So what balance do y'all keep with personal life as well with ministry? What is the balance you can give someone who may be Doing ministry, but all but lacking in the home life. Well, that first ministry is the family. You know, that's the first ministry, and uh, that's that's we put our family first. You know, we we see each other every day. We we, we eat dinner together. We pray. We we love each other. And so, uh, for me, my viewpoint, the first ministry is family. What you had to say about that, babe? Um, same thing. I was just gonna say, um, what advice you have to keep a, a sense of humor, mm-hmm. not take everything so serious, and recognize, uh, mm-hmm. recognize the enemy. You know, some things people break up and and fall out for things that are so small. You know, you have to remember why God brought you together in the first place, and you have to. Uh, like the Bible says that Christ, um, he loved the church, you know, like the growing bride. So you have to remember to, you know, love that person more. You know, if you're always considering the other person, then it keeps you mindful of, of things you do and how you interact with each other. And so, you know, you're going to have arguments, disagreements, but if you just keep a level head and keep a sense of humor, and learn how to forgive. Either. You know, learn how to forgive, talk about it, fuss about it, get it out, you know, then come to an agreement. Come to agreement. Move on. Yeah. And stay together. And kids help, too, because when you teach your kids the right way, and they see you having an argument like, Mama, that's not that's not right, or Daddy, that's not right, tell Mama you sorry. Daddy, I mean, Mama, tell Daddy you sorry. <laughs> They <laughs> they hold us accountable too, you know. So, so. But it's love. It's about love and forgiveness, <laughs> and being a, being able to try to work out your problems by communication. That's really what it's all about. Yeah. And if you're in ministry, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was, oh, I was just gonna say, if you're in ministry, you know, because you you said when you're in ministry. How do you keep that balance? You know, at any time, if if you see that the family is lacking or that there's a disconnect, 
you know, you have to know, it has to be already understood, okay, when we get to a point like that, man, it's time to take a step back, not drop the ministry, but we might have to lay that to the side for just a second and let's focus on us and let's focus on our family, you know, because that's first and that has to be already understood. Awesome. And that's good. And communication, we know that's very important. Communication is very important because, you know, you're one. You know, in you know, our side of God, we know that y'all are one and become one. A lot of people in the generation don't understand that they, they marry, but they got their own thing. And when you marry, you can't have your own thing. But you just have to always sit each other before you bring it to you. So I mean, because at the end of the day, everybody's going to go. Who's going to be there? Your husband, your wife going to be on one day with you by your side. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right, bro. And also with the upcoming album, do y'all have any guest artists on the upcoming album? Any um uh, special producers on the album? So who are all gonna be on your new album? Um, really it's just us. We have one song that may um feature Banks Boy. Tyler Banks. Um, oh Right now he's on it. We're working on that one, trying to see how it's gonna go. It might be a remix or it might come out as the original track. Um, he's on there. He's like a brother to us. And so and um, can sing and rap. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's why we like working with Tyler Banks. But uh we should also uh, put you in contact with him too, man, and uh maybe you can hear uh, some of his own stuff and things like that. But as far as the project goes, we're uh, working with him. We're working with some people out of uh, Atlanta and um uh, mm-hmm. Um, as producers, um, Sam Peasy, uh, he now goes by Tony Factory Beat um, out of Atlanta. He worked on um, all of the tracks are produced by him. And then engineering, we have uh, Daniela Riviera. Um, also, Sam Peasy did some of the engineering on that. Um, Christopher Starr out of Atlanta. Um, CSP. With CSC Music Group, and I think that's, that's yeah, that's pretty much yeah, it. that's it for now. So we're building that project up until we have a full uh, product. So uh, for now, we're gonna be dropping the single "Child of the King," and uh, it's hot, man. I gotta tell you, man, it's really hot. So uh, you, you're gonna have to check that one out, man. And it's just basically uh, directed toward the enemy, you know, letting them know. That he can't have us with a child of a king, knowing who you are, knowing your identity in Christ. That's true. That's true. And um, and I'm in agreement with y'all 100. percent Um, for push for peace, um, the goal for push for peace. I know y'all talk about that, but for this year event, what is y'all believing God for? I know y'all believe in God for souls to be born to the kingdom. Um, but what do y'all really expect? Um. I know y'all expecting God to move in a mighty big way. Um, yes, we just want to really um reach everybody. You know, at one point it was where people um would say, you know, these kind of things are done by young people, it's the young people, it's the old people, it's the white people, it's the black people, it's this kind of people. But now if you look in the news, it's everybody, it's everywhere. You know, it's all over um, in different demographics. So we just want to reach everybody. And what we really want people to see is that coming together, you know, we can do so much more when we come together. Everybody has something to offer. You know, you can't just be concerned about you and yours and your neighborhood and, and your situation or what's going on because, any anything can end up at your front door, you know, at any time without you knowing it, you know. So because you live over here, because you live over there, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be concerned about the state of our city or the state of our state or our country for that matter. So we just want everybody to really come together. We believe in God that he's going to do something mighty. This is a vision that he gave us, and every year he increases it. And um, he just showed us what's the answer. You know, these our mission where it says to promote peace through faith, unity, and love, those are the three things that God gave us. You know, we didn't come up with those. He gave those to us. And we said, God, what do you mean? You know, but the first one is faith. 
And that's because people have to believe that they can really make a difference. They have to believe God's word, what it says. You have a lot of Christians that quote his word, but they don't believe what it says when he says, you know, he'll heal our lambs. We call out to him and pray to him and ask him, come together, you know, two or more are gathered. So we have to first believe, you know, a lot of people, um, are fearful and timid, and sometimes we act like God is not big enough. You know, he's not big enough to break addictions. He's not big enough to change people's mind about gun violence, about how they operate with each other. You know, he's not big enough to change an abuser, but he is, you know. So it starts with us believing, and then, like I said, unity coming together, and also through love. You know, that love love is the key to everything. You know, the Bible says if you don't have charity, without charity you have nothing. You know, everything starts and ends with love. That's true. And I agree with you one hundred percent because love color more than of sin, of course. And um yes. I think I seen an article I think on Facebook where saying that Mobile was like number twenty two is for being the murder capital. How do y'all feel about that? Well, yeah, uh, number one, I, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, uh, a lot, I believe it's a lot of um, influence from the media to cause uh, hysterical reaction. You know, uh, you know, they, I, I believe in, in that the government and also the media tries to program our minds to be in fear. You know, but the Bible said that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So um, I think a lot of that is based on fear, uh, based on getting a reaction out of people, and um, it's unhealthy. And so uh, that's what our mission is, man. We're not afraid to go out and to show love to people. We're not afraid to, um, you know, just reach a, a hand out to let people know, hey, there's still love in, in the city. There's still love. There's still good people out here, and uh, you can be one too. And you don't have to be afraid to come outside of your home and live in fear. You know. Uh, and if I could add to that, I just want to say that's where the love comes in. I personally, because of the work that I do, um, working with juveniles and just seeing young people, um, even the ones that are going through the metro system. Um, I really feel like a lot of people say it's a mental health issue. It is, but it's when you're talking about the mind, you're also talking about the heart, and I think that it's just a heart issue. You know, mm-hmm. people kill people without even thinking about it, and by the time they think about it and they're sorry for it, it's too late. Like one of the guys um, not too long ago, there's been a few of them, killed, you know, young children. And then they, when they walk out, they have this remorse and this pitiful look on their face as if they don't know what happened. And some of that, I think, is, is actually true, even though it's, you know, we don't, people don't feel sorry for them at all. And, you know, we know that people, they know better. But at the same time, I think that some of that is really true. That's the trick of the enemy. That's how powerful the enemy is when you give him a footstool, when you allow him to live in your mind. So that's why I say it really is a heart issue and a mind issue in which, you know, our hearts are our minds. So I think that's that's one of the biggest problems. We can get to that, you know. That's why the Spirit of God is so important to let to introduce people to the Holy Spirit so that they have the right mind. Because that's the way that's the only way it's gonna change is to change people's minds. And then also, I believe that you know, we're dealing with the mind. The, the media uh, desensitizes us to uh, to violence. You know, violence is on the video games. Violence is on the TV shows. Violence is on the radio and the music. So a lot of that stuff, all of that is considered media, and I believe that uh, that type of media desensitizes us to violence. And it's, yes, it, it is. It, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was, I was just pretty much finishing my statement. I was just pretty much saying that, you know, it, 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 it kind of makes us seem like uh, violence is, is, is not that serious and, 
uh, everybody does it, everybody should have a gun and kill. You know, it desensitizes us to uh, take it for granted, like it's not that serious. And that's that's what the the job of the media is right now in these days. Life is not value. Right, you know, life and, is less value. And people don't value their lives. They don't, they don't know their purpose. That's why I say it's a mind thing also as well because – they don't know their purpose, and if you if you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you, you know, I mean, He is life, and, and without Him, you don't have life. And if you don't have that in you, you know, you don't know what's right. You don't know your purpose, so you're just walking through life, and it's easy for you to get caught up in those things like violence and killing and you're shooting and robbing. Life. You're yeah. a victim of the wild of the devil. Yeah, you're a victim. And then that same devil turn around and, and shame you, you know. Mm-hmm. So. That's right, I agree. Also, I think we have a caller from the 240 two, area call from the full of men. We've got four minutes left. I'm um, just they want to say anything. Okay. Um, caller, right. you're live from the area code 240 area code. What's your name? If you'd like to say anything. Uh, no, not really. Okay, then. Appreciate you um, for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, we appreciate it on that on that um, note. Um, we got three minutes left on the broadcast. Um, so, Divine Purpose, y'all have any closing remarks? Um, to our viewers that may be listening, also may listen in the near future. We also know that the program is live. It's also being recorded. So people that missed out, they can go back and check the replay out. So any final remarks y'all have, we got three minutes left. All right. We just want to invite people to come back out um, for Push for Peace 2018. This year is going to be on October 26th, downtown in Mobile, Alabama, in Cathedral Square. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, send us an email at the number two, Divine Purpose, D I V I N E P U R P O S E at gmail dot com. Number is two five one three six 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 seven zero one, and we just look forward to seeing you. Bring your lawn chairs, come out, have a good time. Uh, the music will be out later this month. It's either going to be on the nineteenth or the twenty sixth. Um, you can go to our Facebook page, Divine Purpose. If you can't find it, Divine Purpose backslash five two six for Facebook. It's Divine Purpose for Instagram, and uh, we have a website, www.itsdivinepurpose.com, and you can find all of our information there. And also, if you want to see a live performance from Divine Purpose, make sure that you come out to the Push for Peace on October 26th, downtown Cathedral Square, Mobile, Alabama, and you'll see exactly what we do. So that's what it's all about, man. We appreciate the time. Um, you can also check us out on um, Fox 10 on October 19th. Yes, sir. We're going to be on Studio 10, as a matter of fact. We're going to be on doing television on that day, so you'll be able to see us put a And uh, Radio WGOK and WDLT on October 19th. Yes, yes, sir. So be on the lookout for us, man. We appreciate you, uh, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Farmer. We appreciate everything you're doing. Keep doing it. It all started with you, so. Let's keep it going. Let's keep yep. pushing. Oh, I appreciate you, and I love y'all, too. And I said just doing the radio thing from the Vince Transit to the radio broadcast. I had real fun back doing radio again. So, yes, sir. like I said, I keep up and up no. for y'all. Go ahead. Go no, no, I, I know, I know you're gonna be busy this, this day. I wanted to invite you out to come set up a table, man. If you could, you know, somebody from your team, you know, could come out as well, man. But I just wanted to extend that invitation to you as well. Oh, I do appreciate it, cause I really do. Um, but like I said, hopefully, if I get off in time, cause I'm, I'm, I'm already downtown area to jail, I'll probably stop through that on my way um, home. So, in really, cause I know y'all still be going on around that time anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if anybody wants to give a donation, uh, we can greatly use those. Um, you can go to Two Sparkle Productions Inc. Um, at gmail dot com. That's our email for our five hundred one c three. It is tax deductible on PayPal. Two Sparkle Productions Inc. at gmail dot com. Thank awesome. you. Uh, y'all heard the interview. Also, check the replay out. The replay. 
So y'all can check it out if you miss anything. Really show support to Divine Purpose. They're doing a great thing. It's good to see a husband and wife work together and do things. So we'll talk to y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Lord, love is so sincere. I gave my heart to you, baby. When my problems disappear.